Hey everybody, this is Miss Barry, and in this video we're going to go over the equations of lines lesson in Unit 1. So when we're talking about equations of lines, the first thing that we usually talk about is the slope of a line. The slope is a measure of the steepness of a line, how steep the line is, or how um, flat the line is. So when you first learned slope, you probably learned it as rise over run. Slope equals rise over run. Um, rise meaning how does the point change on the coordinate plane um, when you're going up and down. Run meaning how is the point changing on the coordinate plane when you're going left and right. So as you progress through your earlier math classes, then you may hear slope referred to as the vertical change over the horizontal change. And we can form that into an algebraic um, formula or equation in the following way. So we have m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Um, here, x1, y1, and x2, y2 are points on the line. right? So we've got the y values in the top, the x values in the bottom. Now people are generally pretty good with slope. Um, the one thing I do want to just warn you about is to make sure that you always, whenever you are asked to find the slope or if you're asked to find the equation of the line and, and you need to first find the slope, I want you to always label your points, x1, y1, x2, y2. Each point should have the, um, the x and the y coordinates should have the same subscript, right? So make sure that you don't label your points like x1, y2 or x2, y1, right? So the subscripts should match within the points. Um, and then the second thing I want you to make sure of is just make sure that your y's go in the top and the x's go in the bottom. So every once in a while someone will mess this up by just accidentally flipping this around and putting the x's in the top and the y's in the bottom. So just make sure that you get that written down correctly. Um, speaking of writing it down, if you have not, if you're not following along with the guided notes, um, and you're doing this on your own paper, make sure that you write this formula down. This should also go on your formula sheet. Um, this is something that we'll use um, over and over throughout this lesson. So next you might talk about slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, but I want to introduce you to point slope form first. Um, this is my preferred form of an equation of a line. Um, it is, this is really just an algebraic rearrangement of the slope formula. So you can see that if you divided by everything that's in these parentheses right here, x minus x1, if you divided both sides by that, then that would give you back the slope formula. Um, I like this form because it um, is very versatile. This will work if you know a point and a slope. Uh, which is what its intended use is. So that's why they call it point slope form. It's um, when you have a point and the slope. Um, but this will also work if you know the y-intercept. Um, so instead of using slope intercept form, you could just use point slope form. If you're just gonna, if you wanna just memorize one, I would say this is the one to memorize. If you're fine with memorizing multiple forms of an equation of a line or having multiple forms, of an equation of a line on your index card or your formula sheet, then write both of them down. But if you really just want to memorize one, this would be the one that you want to memorize. It is the most versatile. So here, m is of course the slope and x1, y1 is a point on the line. So for the slope formula, we had to have two points. For this point slope form of an equation of a line, we only need one point, but we do also need to know the slope. So next we have slope intercept form. This is probably um, something that you all recognize, y equals mx plus b. Here m is the slope, so m is the variable that we use for the slope. 
and the point zero B is the Y intercept. Now I'm pretty lenient with um, what you call the Y intercept, but some textbooks are more specific. So depending on which book you're teaching out of or which book you're learning out of, if you're taking another algebra class after this, um, sometimes a textbook will call just the letter B the Y intercept. So they might say B here is just a number. So let's say B is negative three. So they might say the Y intercept is negative three. But some books are more picky and they want you to say the point zero comma negative three is the Y intercept. All right. So either way represents the same idea. I'm fine with you calling the Y intercept um, you know, just the number, or if you want to write it in the form, let me switch to my laser pointer. So if you want to write it as just the number, that's fine with me. If you want to write it as the point, zero, comma, whatever the number is, that's fine with me too. It's totally your preference. So now that we've got all that information, we know the slope formula, we know the point slope form of the equation of a line, we know the slope intercept form, we can um, start doing some questions. So the first question says, find the equation of the line passing through the points negative two comma negative three and one comma three. Then plot the points and graph the line. All right, so for right now, I've, you can see that I've put this coordinate plane up here. We really don't need it yet. We're supposed to find the equation of the line that's passing through the points first. That'll take us a little bit of work. Um, and the very last thing that we're gonna do is plot the points and then graph the line. Okay, so let's talk about how are we going to start this. Right now, they're telling us that we need to find the equation of the line. We know that typically whenever we're supposed to find equations of lines, um, they almost, almost, they, excuse me, they almost always want them to be written in slope intercept form, right? So that means they want it to look like this, y equals mx plus b. And really what that means, if you, if you see those directions on a question and it says write your answer in slope intercept form, that just means they want Y on one side and they want everything else on the other side, right? So they want Y to be by itself on one side, traditionally it's the left side, and then everything else should be on the other side. Now it's not terribly important the order that you write the right hand side in. So just to keep things neat, I'm always going to write it in the form mx plus b. So just doing it the same way every time kind of, you know, develops a pattern in my brain um, and helps me know, like, when do I end the problem? So I'm going to write it the same way every time with y by itself on the left and then a number attached to x and then plus or minus whatever the y intercept is. All right. So we know that we need the slope and the y-intercept. Uh, right now, we're not given the y-intercept. We're given these two random points, negative two, negative three, and one, three. All right, so let's start by finding the slope of the line. All right, so step one is to find the slope. All right, so let's grab our slope formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where x1, y1, and x2, y2 are points on the line. All right, so I told you earlier that I suggest that you always label your points. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. That way I can come up here and label my points. All right, so there's my first point. x1, y1 is negative two, negative three. And then x2, y2 is going to be my second point, so 1, 3. It doesn't matter uh, the order in which you label these. If you called negative 2, negative 3, um, so if you were to call that first point x2, y2, that would be totally fine. As long as the subscripts match, it does not matter. So as long as both of these coordinates, x and y, have the same subscript, it doesn't matter if you call the first one x1, y1 or the second one, x1, y1. All right, so now I'm going to plug in my numbers. y2 minus y1, all right, that's gonna be y2 is three, 
y1 was negative 3, so it's going to be 3 minus negative 3. And then x2 minus x1, that's going to be x2 is 1, x1 is negative 2. So it's going to be 1 minus negative 2. All right, so there's what I have right now. Now what are we going to do to those double negatives? We're going to change them to positives or pluses. All right, now we can simplify. 3 plus 3 is 6. 1 plus 2 is 3. 6 over 3, that reduces to 2. All right, so there's our slope. That was the first thing that we needed to find the equation of the line. The second thing that we needed was the y-intercept. So there's two ways you can do this. Some people... Um, really love using the slope intercept form. So y equals mx plus b. That's what they feel comfortable with. And um, it takes, a, to, in my opinion, it takes just a little bit of extra work, um, but you'll get to the same answer. I'm gonna use point slope form because I think it's easier and I think it's a little less work. And also because I know the slope and I know a point on the line. So if I know the slope and a point, then I'm gonna use point slope form. All right, so just to remind you of what point slope form is, it's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Um, x1, y1, I already had those labeled up top. So you can see they're labeled x1 is negative 2, y1 is negative 3. And then I just found the slope, m is 2. So I'm going to plug all that in. Sorry. There we go. Okay. So now that we've got that plugged in, I'm going to change my double negatives to positives or pluses. All right now I can simplify this. So I'm going to always start by multiplying out the right hand side. Um, and then the last thing I do is move or is get y by itself. So move that number over. So 2 times x plus 2, that's going to be 2x plus 4 if you distribute that 2. Right, so 2x plus 4 on the right. Now we're going to subtract 3 from both sides to get y by itself. And that leaves us with Sorry, I don't know why that popped up. There we go. Subtract 3 from both sides. That cancels and we get y equals 2x plus 1. So there is the equation of our line. All right, so step one, or the, the first part of the question is done. The first part of the question said, find the equation of the line passing through those points. And now we're just supposed to plot the points on the graph and then draw a line between them. So you only need two points to graph a line. All right, so we are given two points. So let's go ahead and plot those. All right, we've got them plotted. Um, hopefully you can see what I did there. So for negative 2, negative 3, I'm going to the left 2 and then down 3. And then for 1, comma 3, so for that second point, I'm going to the right 1 and then up 3. All right, so the first coordinate is the x, the second coordinate is the y. And whether it's positive or negative tells you if you're going to move left or right or up or down. All right, so now that I've got my points plotted, I'm going to go ahead and just draw as straight of a line as I can in between them. doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. And we're done. All right, so let's try this without the graph. All right, so it says write the slope intercept form of the line that passes through the point negative 6, 5 with the slope m equals 2.3. All right, so write the slope intercept form, so that means y by itself, everything else on the other side. So write the slope intercept form of the line that passes through the point negative 6, 5, and has slope m equals 2 plus 2.3, sorry. All right, so I want you to try this. I want you to pause the video and take a couple of minutes, see if you can do this on your own. All right, so if you're coming back because you feel stuck or you need a hint, then I want to, uh, I would say that your first step is going to be to use point slope form. Point slope form. So go find that formula, 
plug in your point, label your point x1, y1, plug in your slope m, and then get y by itself. All right, so I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker since I'm expecting that you've already gone through this. All right, so I'm starting with point slope form. If you use slope intercept form, that is okay too. Um, you will get to the same answer. All right, so with point slope form, I have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I'm plugging in everything I know. Uh, there's my point x1, y1. So x1 is negative 6, y1 is 5, and m is 2.3. So I'm going to plug all that in. That's going to give me y minus 5 equals 2.3 times x minus negative 6. So go ahead and change that double negative to a positive. Multiply through by 2.3. That gives me 2.3x plus 13.8. Then I'm going to add 5 to both sides. That gives me y equals 2.3x plus 18.8. So don't, don't feel like if you get, you know, decimals, that doesn't mean you did anything wrong. Sometimes your answers are going to have decimals in them. Um, if you prefer to write them as a fraction, I'm okay with that too. Uh, if you feel comfortable with fractions and typing in fractions when we're doing this stuff, um, then by all means, use the fraction form. Okay, so on this one, we're going to kind of work backwards from what we have been doing. So... It says, write the equation of the line shown below. It looks like I have a typo in, in there that should say, write the equation of the line shown below. All right, so we're given this graph, and we can see that it's got a couple of points marked. So that would be the first thing that you would want to do is identify the points you see. All right, so take a second, pause the video and try to identify those points. All right, so the points that I'm seeing are 0, 2. That's the, actually the y-intercept. So that's where the graph or the line crosses the y-axis. And we've also got the point 1, 8. All right, so there's our points, 1, 8 and 0, 2. All right, so now we're just going to replicate the process that we saw in question 1. All right, so we're going to treat this problem as if it is just like question one, we are going to find the equation of the line that passes through the points 1, 8, and 0, 2. All right, so I'm going to start by labeling my points and finding the slope. All right, so labeling my points, I have x1, y1, x2, y2. Now you can use the slope formula if you want to. You could also just count. Um, you could count up on the graph. So if I'm starting with my point zero two, then I would count rise over run. So I'm going to go up first. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So up six. So my rise is six and my run just go to the right one. So both of those, that was a rise um, in the positive direction and a run in the positive direction. So those are both positive. So my run, my slope is going to be rise over one run, which was six over one. Right, so rise over run was six over one, which is six. All right, so that's my slope. All right, so now I'm going to use point slope form to find the equation of the line. You can see I've already worked it out here, where I've worked out most of it. Um, we've done this a couple of times, so I'm okay with you seeing this, but if you want to just pause the video um, and try to work this out yourself, make sure it matches what you're seeing on my screen. So I have point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now, why am I using point slope form? Because I know a point and I know the slope. Um, in this particular case, you, you also know the y-intercept, so it would be fine to use slope intercept form here as well. So if you wanted to jump straight to the answer here, you could. Um, but I'm uh, working this problem as if I don't know the y-intercept, or maybe I just don't recognize that that's the y-intercept. 
So I've got point slope form here. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. I plug in everything that I know. Um, let's see. Label those points. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. All right, so X1 is 1. Y1 is 8. So I'm going to plug those in. So that gives me Y minus 8 equals 6 times X minus 1. Um, like I said earlier, I always start by multiplying out the right-hand side. So 6 times x minus 1 becomes 6x minus 6. And then I'm going to add 8 to both sides. It's going to cancel on the left. That's going to leave me with y. Here we go. y equals 6x plus 2. And there's my equation. All right, so next we're going to talk about some special lines, uh, in particular parallel and perpendicular lines. On the screen, you're seeing the sort of informal definitions that I've come up with for parallel lines and perpendicular lines um, and their criteria that they have to meet in order to be called parallel or perpendicular. All right, so parallel lines are two non-vertical lines that run alongside each other but never intersect. All right, so parallel lines might look like this. Well, that wasn't a very good drawing. Let me try again. Yeah, that was better. Okay, so we've got these two lines that are running alongside each other in the same direction, um, and they can continue out forever and ever and ever in both directions, and they're never going to touch and they're never going to cross. All right, and then perpendicular lines intersect at a 90 degree angle. So not only do they cross, they cross at a 90 degree angle. All right, so like this. And then you might see that they have a angle labeled there, a 90 degree angle. So that little square there tells us that's a 90 degree angle. Let me put an arrow on this side too. There we go. Okay, so let's talk about the criteria or what what does this mean uh, in terms of how the slope all right so what do these definitions tell us in regards to the slope all right so for parallel lines parallel lines are going to be two non-vertical lines that run alongside each other forever but they never intersect those are going to have the same slope or equal slopes so those two lines are going to have equal slopes perpendicular lines are going to be a little bit different. The slopes of perpendicular lines are going to be opposite reciprocals. All right, so let's talk about what opposite reciprocal means. All right, let's say you have um, a line that has slope 2. All right, the opposite reciprocal is going to be the opposite sign. So it's going to be negative because the original one was positive. And reciprocal means you're going to flip it. All right, so right now you can think of it as 2 over 1. So if you flip it, it becomes 1 over 2. All right, let's do one more example. If you are originally given a line that has a slope of, let's say, negative 2 fifths, the perpendicular line would be the, the slope would be the opposite reciprocal. So it's going to be the opposite sign. So the first one was negative. This one's going to be positive. And it's going to be the reciprocal, so we're going to flip that fraction. So 2 over 5 becomes 5 over 2. All right, let's look at an example. All right, so let's look at this first example. This is definitely something that I would uh, put on the exam. So this is something that you'll want to put a star beside or make a note of. Um, so it says, find the equation of the line that passes through 110, so that's the point 1 comma 10, and is parallel to the graph of y equals 2x plus 5. And it wants us to write the equation, so write our answer in slope-intercept form, which we know that just means um, that we're supposed to have y on one side by itself and everything else on the other side. All right, so let's look at the information we're given here. We know that this new line that we're supposed to be finding is supposed to be parallel to the graph of this original line, y equals 2x plus 5. 
All right, so if the line is parallel to that graph, then those lines must have equal slopes, All right? So we just learned that, that if two lines are parallel, then they have equal slopes. All right, so let's figure out what is the slope of that original line? What's the slope of the line y equals 2x plus 5? Well, if you compare it to our y equals mx plus b form, slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, we know that the slope is m, so it's the number, the coefficient in front of x. All right, so we know that the slope is 2. All right, so now we know that m is 2. All right, so we know that the slope is 2, and we also know that the line passes through the point 110. All right, this is something that we've done before. I think this was question number 2 or question number 3. <clears throat> All right, so if you have a point and the slope, let's use point slope form. Y minus Y1 equals M. Let me write that down. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. All right, so you're going to label your point X1, Y1. Sorry, you can hear my daughter. She wants me to hurry up. She is not impressed with uh, parallel lines. All right, so now we are just going to plug in what we know. We know that M is 2. We know that X1 is 1 and Y1 is 10. All right, so we're going to plug that those numbers in. So we have Y minus 10 equals 2 times X minus 1. All right, we know that at this point, we multiply out the right-hand side. So 2 times x minus 1 is 2x minus 2. Now we're going to move that 10 over. So we're going to add 10 to both sides. What do you get if you add 10 to both sides? Plus 10, plus 10. It's going to cancel. All right, so that's going to give us y equals 2x plus 8. So there's our... There's our line. That's the equation of the line that passes through the point 110 and is parallel to the graph of y equals 2x plus 5. So those two lines are going to run alongside each other forever. And they'll never cross and they'll never, never touch. Rachel, how dare you? Oh, was I still recording? <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. All right, the next one says, find the equation of the line that passes through the point 1 comma 2 and is perpendicular to y equals negative 3x plus 7. And we're supposed to, again, write the equation in slope-intercept form, which we know just means put y on one side by itself and put everything else on the other side. Okay, so the last problem was parallel. This one is perpendicular. The process is exactly the same, except for whenever we find the slope, we're gonna to have to remember what does it mean when two lines are perpendicular? What does it mean for the slope when two lines are perpendicular? All right, so here we're looking at a line that is perpendicular to y equals negative three x plus seven. All right, so if a line is perpendicular, to the graph of negative 3x plus 7, or excuse me, y equals negative 3x plus 7, then those lines must have opposite reciprocal slopes. All right, so opposite sign and then flip the number. All right, so what is the slope of the line? What is the slope of our original line right here? Y equals negative 3x plus 7. The slope is negative 3, right? M equals negative 3. All right, so we've got to find the opposite reciprocal of that. All right, so opposite reciprocal of that. Opposite means opposite sign, right? So the original line was negative slope. This one is going to be a positive slope, All right? And then reciprocal means flip the fraction. So this is like 3 over 1. That one's going to become 1 over 3, positive 1 over 3. All right, so our slope is one third. Our slope is one third, and we also know that the line 
passes through the point 1 comma 2. I had another typo right there. <clears throat> All right, so we know a point. We know the slope. Let's use point slope form. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Okay. Let's label our point X1, Y1. All right, now we're going to plug in everything we know. Y minus 2 equals 1 third times X minus 1. All right, so y minus 2 equals 1 third times x minus 1. All right, so now I would like you to pause the video and try to get y by itself. All right, so pause the video, try to get y by itself. Don't be intimidated by the fraction. Just multiply through by that fraction. If you need to use your calculator, that is totally fine. If you haven't paused yet, make sure you're pausing here and trying to work this out on your own. All right, so I'm going to start by multiplying through on the right hand side. I'm going to multiply through on the right hand side. One third times X minus one. One third times X is one third X. One third times negative one is negative one third. All right. Now I've got to add 2 to both sides to get y by itself. All right, that one on the right, left cancels out. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to go over here to the side. All right, if I do negative 1 third plus 2, that's totally fine if you want to do this on your calculator. I think, um, let's see, negative 1 third plus... And I think when I was thinking of this, I thought of 2 as 6 over 3, so that way they had a common denominator. So that's like saying negative 1 over 3 plus 6 over 3. Um, so I keep the denominator the same. I combine the numerators. Negative 1 plus 6 would be um, 5 thirds. All right, so y equals 1 third x plus 5 thirds. And that's our answer. So that is the line that passes through the point 1 comma 2 and is perpendicular. So that means it crosses at a 90 degree angle. The line y equals negative 3x plus 7. And notice how the y-intercepts there had nothing to do with each other. Notice how they're totally different. All right, so the y-intercept of that original line was 7. The y-intercept of our new line is 5 thirds. It is, that is normal. It's okay to get... Um, you know, the y-intercepts to not match up. So a lot of times whenever I see people make mistakes on this, it'll be that they think that that y-intercept has to do something with the, has something to do with the new line and it doesn't, All right? So don't feel like that you need to do anything with that y-intercept. All right, the last topic that we're gonna talk about today is finding x and y-intercepts. So let's look at that. So <clears throat> finding X and Y intercepts is pretty easy for lines. Um, the more complicated your function or your equation that you're working with, the more complicated it potentially could be to find the X and Y intercepts. Um, but for lines, it is super easy. Now, the nice thing about this process is that um, for the rest of the semester, this is going to be how we find X and Y intercepts. So this process never changes no matter what the equation looks like, no matter what the function looks like. This is always going to be how you find x and y intercepts. All right, so to find the x intercepts, you are going to replace y with 0 and then solve for x. All right, so replace the opposite variable with 0 and then, excuse me, and then solve for x. <clears throat> and then for the y intercepts, the process is going to look really similar. You can probably guess what you're going to do here. Um, so to find the y-intercepts, you're going to replace x with 0 and then solve for y. All right, so make sure that you write this down if you're taking your own notes. Make sure that you put this on your formula sheet. Um, this is something that's really short and doesn't take up a lot of room, but if you didn't have it on your formula sheet, um, you would probably be pretty lost.
on how to do this. All right, so let's use intercepts to graph this equation. So using intercepts to graph an equation, it's a fine way to graph. It's not my personal um, suggestion for how to graph. To me, I think the easiest way to graph is just to um, take the slope and the y-intercept um, and, and plot those on the graph. Um, or to make a table, that's the most straightforward way to, to graph an equation. But using the intercepts is one way that you can graph lines. All right, so this is going to give us two points. That's all we need to graph a line. We're just going to find those two points and put them on the graph and then connect them with a straight line. All right, so here we have an equation that's in what we call standard form. All right, this is called standard form. Standard form. All right, standard form is where your two variables, x and y, are on the same side, and then the constant is on the other side by itself. Constant just means a number. All right, so here you can see we've got our x and y's on, on the left side, and we've got just our number on the right-hand side. All right, so let's find the x-intercept to begin. Um, for the x-intercept, remember, we're going to replace y with 0, and then we're going to solve for x. That means get x by itself. All right, so replace that y with 0. That's going to become 4x minus 7 times 0 equals 28. All right, negative 7 times 0 is 0, so that essentially cancels out. All right, so for all intents and purposes, that basically cancels out. And now we have 4x equals 28. All right now, to solve for x, we just need to divide both sides by 4. Remember, we said that to solve means to get that variable by itself. All right, so divide both sides by 4. That gives you x equals 7. Now, we talked about this earlier, but I'm fine with you writing the x-intercept as just x equals 7. But some books, when you're teaching this or um, if you take another class in the future, we might even see this later on in the semester, um, sometimes they want you to write the intercept in the form of a point, so 7 comma 0 would be that point. Now, why 0? Because we replaced y with 0 at the beginning, remember? Remember we said y was 0, so that's where the 0 comes from. All right, now for the y-intercept, we're just going to do sort of the opposite. We're going to replace x with 0, so going up here to our original equation, I'm going to replace x with 0, so that becomes... 4 times 0 minus 7y equals 28. The 4 times 0 is 0, so that basically cancels out. All right, then we're left with negative 7y equals 28. Um, then we're going to divide both sides by negative 7 to get y by itself. Don't forget the negative. All right, that's going to give us y equals negative 4. Now, if we were to write this as a point, x comma y, we just found out our y was negative 4, so put that in the y position in the y-coordinate, and what was our x value? What did we replace x with? Zero. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm going to graph, or excuse me, I'm going to plot my two points. Now, I chose this just to show you that sometimes the, the I chose this particular coordinate plane just to show you that sometimes they label these coordinate planes really strangely in ways that you may not have um, thought to label them yourself. So you can see that here we've got like a little tick mark in the middle and then it says four, then a tick mark in the middle and then it says eight. So this is going up by twos. So this is zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Right, so this is a good way to, um, if you were trying to graph a line and maybe the y-intercept was something kind of big like negative 12 or positive 15. All right, so this is one way you could uh, label your coordinate plane so that you could get to a larger number and keep it still relatively small. Keep the coordinate plane small. I mean, okay, so we're going to plot our two points, 7 comma 0 and 0 negative 4. All right, so 7, let's see, there's 2, 4, 6, Eight. So 7 is going to be the x value that's in between 6 and 8. Remember, this is our x-intercept, so this is where the graph crosses the x-axis. So that's the 
horizontal axis. So I'm looking at the X axis here. You can see it's labeled X right there. And seven would be in between six and eight. So I'm just gonna plot that in there as not good as I can. All right, and then the Y intercept, so where it crosses the Y axis is negative four. So that's down here at the bottom at negative four. All right, so now that I've got those two points plotted, I can just draw my line in between them just as, as good as you can, doesn't have to be perfect. There we go, there's our line. Um, now that's everything for this section. If you have any, or for this lesson, if you have any questions, um, please make sure that you are emailing me um, and let me know and I'll be happy to help you and I'll see you guys in the next video.